If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, November 1st, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining us in the Finis Monitor in just a little bit will be Sue Chen. You may know her as Jack Congress coach before he headed to the University of Texas, and she has started a new team called Machine Aquatics. She just got back from Colorado Springs where she was the head women's coach for USA Swimming Select Camp. Let's bring in Sue now via Skype from her home in Rockville, Maryland. Sue, it's good to see you. How are you today? Oh, I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Can't complain here. Okay. So, uh, congratulations on the new team, Machine Aquatics. I believe you're now in your sixth or seventh month? Yeah, yeah. Just about that. We started at the end of March. Um, machine Aquatics has been around in Virginia, and this is um, the first uh, part of Machine Aquatics that's in Maryland right now. So, we're very fortunate to be part of a fantastic team. What was, uh, where did the desire come from to move from where you were for a long time at Rockville Montgomery Swim Team to uh, working with Machine Aquatics? Yeah, you know, a lot of people ask me that, and um, I had a great experience with Rockville Montgomery. I just wanted to challenge myself a little bit more. Um, I wanted to do some different things, um, kind of make sure I'm working with the younger kids. I get a, a lot of opportunities with Machine to work with the little guys. Um, and I just wanted to see what I could do on my own. Well, I know you didn't actually start the, the actual team that you said is coming over into Maryland, but what's, what does machine aquatics mean? Where did that name come from? Do you know? <laughs> A lot of people ask me that, and um, you have to probably get clarification from Paris and Dan Jacobs, but my understanding is machine, the name machine just, came about because some kids were swimming in lane one at practice and they were incredible and they were called the machine at workouts and that name just carried through to this club. The, the color of the machine are the colors of the uh, flag of Ireland and Stan is Irish so that's how the name and the colors came about. Okay, well, if it's, it seems like you guys will probably do some celebrating on St. Patrick's Day if there's a very <laughs> Irish very strong Irish presence there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I saw something on the, the mission of Machine Aquatics. It said, quote, Machine Aquatics strives to be the preeminent year-round swimming club on the East Coast. Now, obviously, there's a lot of competition for that title on the East Coast, even just very close by to you guys in Maryland. So th is there a timeline for making that mission statement a reality? Well, um, I don't know if there's necessarily a timeline, and I think you'd have to really define what what all that means. I mean, uh, to be a successful club, you want the kids to be successful at any level and enjoy swimming and make it a lifelong commitment. I, I think that's a lot of where Machine is coming from. Um, they are, I don't know if you guys know much about Machine, but they have a swim school down in Virginia that has three endless pools, and it's pretty high tech. So they run a lot of swim lessons out of their their uh, labs down in Virginia. They analyze strokes. My kids go down there and get analyzed by Dan and Josh and other other coaches from the machine uh, family. And that's really what we are. We are we are definitely a family. It's, it's a different atmosphere. We go to coaches meetings and we love being there. We love talking to other coaches and getting different ideas. And, and implementing them and then coming back in a month and, and seeing how they all went and how our test sets were run. Uh, it's very, it's a very close-knit family, although it's a huge family of 800. Um, but they're on their way. I just don't think they have a timeline. I think they're taking it step by step and I think um, they will be incredibly successful about here. So it's not just about getting those kids in the water, giving them swimming laps back and forth? No, no. It's, uh, you know, we're all about, like I said, finding the love for the sport, taking it to a new level technique-wise, which is 
Muslim labs that are in Virginia, and just um, being here for the kids and helping them, and like I said, making swimming a lifelong journey. Well, you must be doing something right in that goal. I mean, you were selected as the women's head coach of that USA Swimming Select Camp just last weekend. I'm curious, what's the process of getting that assignment? Um, Peter Clark called me and said, what are you doing? I would love to have you be the head coach. And I said, yes. <laughs> That's pretty simple. <laughs> I can't imagine any other head coach job being that simple. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty easy. I didn't know if it would fit into my schedule. It was something I've always really wanted to do, and I got to work with unbelievable coaches out there and meet incredible swimmers. So it was. It was very simple. You're right, um, but it was worth it. I talked to Chad Onken, who was the head men's coach, about his experiences for the Morning Swim Show. What did you learn about yourself as a coach during this weekend in Colorado Springs? Um. That's an interesting question because I, everyone always thinks I'm a, a, a coach of male swimmers. Um, so it was nice to have a, a group of 32 teenage girls to know that I'm capable of, of doing it um, as far as structuring the workouts and, and organizing all the girls in their group and know that I, I have a lot to offer these, these young women. And being part of the Women's Leadership uh, Conference in Colorado, that's one of my goals in, in my journey as a coach is to give girls what they need to become successful. So it just kind of enhanced um, what I want to do and how I feel about myself. Okay. Well, it's very interesting what you had said that you, you've kind of been viewed as just a, a, a boys or men's coach. Is that, have you always, have you felt like you've been pigeonholed in that or is that something you, have you always been striving to say, no, I'm, I'm, I can coach across all genders? Um, I don't think I've been pigeonholed. It's funny because I, you know, the past couple people that I've had on national junior team have been boys. Um, I only have sons. I don't have daughters. I have a male dog. So I feel like I'm, I'm surrounded by men my whole life. Um, and it was more, it wasn't, I was pigeonholed. I guess maybe I was pigeonholing myself. Um, and just having that opportunity with the women has made me realize that, you know, I have a lot to offer. Uh, both sexes. So it was just good for my, my peace of mind. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, what did you take away from the weekend that you've been able to apply right away there at Machine Aquatics? That's interesting. Um, it's funny because every time I go to Colorado Springs, I learn so much from sitting at lunch with the coaches. Um, and so we always sit and we gather information from one another. We uh, send workouts. So I, I got a lot of creative ideas on warm-ups and kick sets from my my uh, assistant coaches, with Kate Munson, Jimmy Lewis, and Heather Fort um, were my three assistants out there, and we shared a lot of workouts. And I got right into them right away from you know something simple like vertical kicking and warm-up and kicking on the wall to uh, a little bit more. Um, a more builds into, into fast swimming as opposed to, you know, drill builds and drill kicks. I started implementing things a little bit differently in practice, and, and the kids seem to like it so far. It sounds like you're reinforcing something I've, I've learned when I've talked to coaches is a lot of the information that they, they pick up, at least more, the, the most important information, seems to not come from, like, the formal talks and discussions it's always what happens in the hallways when they're when they're having lunch or dinner together it's, it really sounds like what happened there exactly i mean the, the, the conference was fantastic and we were fortunate enough to you know we listened to peter and we got to listen to russell talk and we heard a few words from frank um and jack so we were really blessed with some great information and these kids were incredible i mean they sat through uh Usada for you know, 45 minutes, and they asked more questions in that in that conference than I've ever heard before. I mean, usually people don't have a lot of questions when they just kind of listen to the people talk about drugs and what to take and not take, and they were so involved in the process. And the same thing with nutrition. They talked and talked and talked with the nutritionists. Um, so it was, I learned quite a bit from the kids as well. It's amazing what... Uh what information they can pick up when they're not looking at their phones. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, uh, you know, as, as many of you know, and as I said at the top of the show, uh, most people probably know you for your work you did with Jack Conger, who's now a freshman at the University of Texas. Uh, you still keep in touch with him, figure out how, find out how he's adjusting the life down there in Austin? I do. We, we talk, well, we talk. We text, we text quite a bit. We, you know, we try to get a phone call in maybe every week, week and a half, just to catch up and say hello with hearing each other's voices. Um, he's doing great. He, you know, he was hooked. I'm mean, going to hate to use that word with the University of Texas, but they have hooked him. He loves it there. He loves Eddie, the team. He loves classes, so he's moving along real well. And tell us about some of the swimmers there at Machine Aquatics you, you think we should be looking out for. May, maybe um, that could be at the same level as Jack or in the next two, three years. Um, I think we have, um, we have a couple standouts right now. We have um, James Murphy is one of our swimmers that was at the national camp. He swims for Dan Jacobs down in Virginia. And he's just, he's a workhorse. He's he really puts all his energy into the sport. He could be a real good one. And then I have a girl, Morgan Hill, who's going to be up and coming right now. She's a ton of talent. She's learning how to work real hard right now. Um, so I think those two names you're going to hear quite a bit in the next couple of years. It's probably exciting as an, um, an age group coach to develop, actually not, not starting with developing, but locating this talent and identifying it and and saying these kids are some are some that are really going to do well and to see them you know like jack or, or like like these other two really come through the sport and really have a desire to want to do well and actually fulfill that promise yeah you know and and sometimes it's, it's a little bit harder to see in some summers than than others um you know i always i tell everyone all the time there's three things that that be a successful swimmer um, and you know it's it's talent it's being a hard worker and it's a lot of luck you know and I think luck comes the harder you work you're going to get a little bit luckier but um, you're right it's pretty fascinating that we can sit here and kind of pinpoint people and then once we pinpoint them um, you kind of build on their strengths that they have and work on their weaknesses well, I know you got to get ready for today's workout, so we won't keep you too yeah. much longer. But uh, before you go, Sue, I want to submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask everybody on the show to get to know them a little bit better, get inside your head a little bit. Uh, okay. First question is, if you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? I just went through this the other day. I would not change it. All right. Well, that's, <laughs> you're, I think you're like the second person to say that. Uh, what's a career you would like to try other than coaching? Um, you know, I always wanted to be a teacher way back when, but I, I feel like I've fulfilled my, my desire with coaching. Okay. What's a career you would definitely not, not like to try? Um, I would never want to work at a grocery store. <laughs> Too much temptation with the food around? <laughs> <laughs> um, next question, what is a rule in the swimming rule book that you would like to change or add? I would change the, the backstroke term for little kids. I always think there should be rules that, that if broken, it's going to make you faster. So if a little kid turns on his stomach at the flags and kind of just floats into the wall and turns, I don't really see that to be a disqualification, so I would change that one. Okay. Last question, where do you like to go for vacation? I like to um, mountain climb up in New Hampshire near, the, uh, near Mount Washington. Okay, that is a nice place to go. I've, been, I've actually driven by Mount Washington and been able to see it. Very beautiful. <laughs> well, Sue, again, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on all the success Machine is having that you're having, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on deck in the future. Great. Thank you, Jeff. My pleasure. All righty. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. Be sure to visit SwimmingWorld.com for the latest news in aquatic sports. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.